In today's video, I'm going to take these thrift store finds and I'm going to upcycle them into some spring decor. I'm going to take this well, I don't really know what this is. If you know what this is, let me know in the comments below. Well, whatever it is, I'm gonna turn it into a wall display to hold my rolling pins. My name's Cheryl and welcome to my channel. The first thing we're gonna do is clean these rolling pins because all of them are gonna get painted and we don't want any bleed through. The first rolling pin, I'm going to use DIY paint in the color cake batter. I did two coats of paint and once it was dry, I wanted to use salt wash to give some texture for the stencil. This is actually another project I was doing, but I'm just showing you here that you put in the salt wash or you could use baking soda, a little bit of paint, mix it up until it's the right consistency. I had to add a little more paint because it was pretty dry and some water, which I'm doing right here. And then once I got it to the consistency that I wanted, I was ready to stencil. I just took the stencil that I got off of Amazon and I just rolled it over the rolling pin and I just went over all the wording with my salt wash mixture. I just want to add some French flair to this rolling pin. To make it easier to work with the rolling pin, I took um, some scrap wood and I cut little like five inch sections to rest the rolling pin on while the paint was drying. Next I used the IOD mold Fleur de Lis and I used the rabbit. If you've never used um, molds before, you want to use a little cornstarch. That'll help the clay release from the mold. I try to take out only enough that I need for my project. And then I put the rest of the clay back so it doesn't dry out. And you can see here that I triple bag it. I just warm it up in my hands. I flatten it out and then I press it over my mold. And you just keep pressing and kind of wiping away. IOD molds have a micro rim so it makes it real easy to remove the excess clay. To get the bunny out, you just flip it over and I slowly pull back the mold and I just help, help it out a little bit. And if you use cornstarch, it usually comes out perfect. I know a lot of people will put it in the freezer for about 15 minutes and then release it, but I've never had any problems. Now I'm just using wood glue. I think it works the best. And then I'm just gonna put it on my rolling pin I let it dry for a couple of hours and then I went over the clay mold and the stenciling with a coat of paint. The clay wasn't completely dry yet, but it was okay to paint. If you've never used chalk paint before, you can see right here that it dries way lighter than when you first put it on. I love to use chalk paint because it's so easy to clean up. It's water-based, so it if you get it on your clothes, it washes out. But you just have to remember you always have to use a sealer. And when everything was dry, I used white wax to seal my paint. But I forgot to turn on my camera, so this is the rolling pin covered in white wax, and now I'm going over it to remove the excess wax. And here's how it turned out. You can see here that I also added some dark wax. Again, I forgot to turn on my camera. For rolling pin number two, I used Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Blue Pine. And this time I used the Redesigned by Prima Cherry Blossom Mold. I cover the whole mold in cornstarch because I want to do a lot of flowers. Once you get all the cornstarch in, you I took it to the trash can, I dumped out the excess, and now it's all ready for the clay. Again, I take out my clay and I work it a little in my hands to warm it up. It makes it a lot easier to work with. I just used small amounts of clay and just filled up the different flowers and stems 
and then I would just keep going instead of having a big piece of clay and trying to fill the whole thing up at once. It's just easier working in small pieces or small sections. Redesign with Prima molds don't have the micro rim, the micro rim like IOD molds do. So you just have to go over the edges of the um, mold a little more to. Um, I just keep like rubbing the extra um, clay off until I can see the edge of the mold. Then when I take the mold, the clay out of the mold, I don't have as much to um, like trim off. This one mold is pretty long, so I split it. I took an X-Acto knife and cut it into two parts. I just thought it would be easier to, when I'm flipping it over, to get it on the rolling pin to have it in two parts. And having that little spatula, it's, I think you decorate a cake with that, but it works great for flipping over these molds. I was a little hesitant on how to flip that last one over. That's why I kept going back and forth. And I need to use painter's tape to um, hold these um, molds into place so they don't slide off the rolling pin. Now I have to be careful because the paint isn't completely cured. So I want to gingerly put my tape over there just to hold the mold in place, but not press too hard on the paint so that when I lift the tape, I'm not removing any of the paint. Searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling So I let it dry overnight and now I'm removing all of the tape. And then I'm just using my X-Acto knife to just clean up some of the edges of the clay. I give the molds a coat of the paint and it really helps if you have a little tiny paintbrush so you can get in all the nicks, uh, nooks and crannies of the molds. And once it was all dry, it was ready for the wax. And again, I used white wax. It just adds so much detail. 
um, to the or the detail comes out of the molds when you use the white wax. And when I wanted more detail, I just added a little more wax. The handles on this rolling pin, they didn't look so great, so I used the finger sander and I sanded them down a little bit. And then I used Wise Owl Furniture Salve to just kind of recondition the um, handles and make them look better. The salve smells so good and you can use it on your hands too. It like softens up your hands. And here's how the second rolling pin turned out. I think it might be my favorite. I just love what the white wax does. For rolling pin number three, I used Waverly chalk paint in ballet slipper. And this time I decided that I was gonna decoupage it and I used Roy Cycle decoupage paper in spring blocks. Here I have a few decoupage papers out and I'm trying to decide which one I want to use. Uh, this one right here, that's a JRV decoupage paper and it's really Eastery. I decided I wanted to go a little more spring than Eastery, so I decided to go with the spring blocks. I used DIY liquid patina for my decoupage medium. And I had a little piece of cling wrap that I wadded up into a ball and I used that to smooth out my decoupage paper to get out all the wrinkles. It's a great way to get out all the wrinkles on the paper. One thing I wish I would have done differently is the paper had a fold in it and that went right down the middle of the rolling pin. So I wish I would have ironed that out. I could have easily ironed that out before I applied it to the rolling pin. I let the rolling pin dry overnight and then I took a, sand, a finger sander and I sanded the edge of the paper off of the rolling pin so it had a nice smooth edge. I also wanted to paint the handles on this rolling pin so I sanded the wood down a little bit just so the paint would apply better. And then here I am trying to get the top off this paint. Yay, I did it! What you didn't see is me taking it over and pounding it on my garage floor to try to get the top of the paint off. And for the handles, I am using Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Bayberry. I think it looks so nice with the decoupage paper. I did to my paint to prevent me not being able to open it again. I cleaned off the edges and then I put Vaseline all around the top rim of the paint. And hopefully next time I go to take that paint top off, it'll come off a lot easier. And here's how rolling pin number three turned out. For rolling pin number four, I used Wise Owl paint in Antique Villa and I used Redesign with Prima Transfer Botanical Paradise. I used two coats of paint and then I let it dry and then it was ready for the transfers. I always say this when I use a transfer, but the hardest part is picking out which transfers you're gonna use. There's so many good designs, there's so many good transfers out there. 
If you've never used a transfer before, they come with the little stick, this little applicator, and you just lay down your design and then you rub over it until the design adheres to whatever you're trying to stick the transfer to. In this case, my rolling pin. And you can just lift it and kind of check and if it's not um, down good, you can just go lay it back down and rub it again and just keep working your way across the transfer until it's on your project. And right here, I'm taking that carrier sheet and I'm rubbing all over the transfer. That just ensures that the transfers adhered really well to my rolling pin. That's called burnishing. Transfers are so fun to do because there, there really isn't a right or wrong way. I don't think you can make a transfer look bad. You can, over, um, you can overlap them and like on one of these flowers coming up, I think I put a stem on there. You just do whatever you want. They just, yeah, they just all look good. And here's how my fourth rolling pin turned out. I included a rolling pin that hasn't been decorated because I thought, you know, I don't have to decorate every rolling pin, but they are fun to do. And they're a common item that you can find at any thrift store, inexpensive too. And I'm finally ready to make the display for my rolling pins. I painted it in Wise Al chalk synthetic paint in Abyss but you'll see when I'm all done, it's gonna be a different color. Not that I intended it to be a different color because I grabbed the wrong color of paint and I didn't realize it until the whole thing was painted. But here we go on how I did the display. It was actually pretty easy. I just pre-drilled the little, what are those things called? Spindles. I pre-drilled the spindles because I only had eight of them and I didn't want them to split. And then I just kind of, I tried to measure, but pretty much I had to just eyeball whether they were, le were level or not. I measured the space between the rolling pins as they went up the ca little cabinet or wall display. But pretty much I just had to eyeball it. And a little added bonus using the spindles is that they're curvy, so the rolling pins like fit right in the curve. So I didn't have to worry about the rolling pins like rolling off of the, if those were like a smooth, um, you know, just smooth wood. Um, but with the spindles, it was kind of curvy, so the rolling pins fit right in there nicely. So if somebody bumped it, it's not, it probably wouldn't fall off. It would be right in the little curve of the spindle. Ah, enough about spindles. Did you have a favorite rolling pin? Let me know down in the comments below. Do you ever decorate uh, rolling pins or do you have a rolling pin collection? This is my second rolling pin video and I was surprised that a lot of people do have rolling pin collections. And here's my display. I love this display. I don't, I still don't know what that thing is but I think it looks great with the rolling pins. A yellow wall is not a great background for photography, but I wanted to hang it up and see what it looked like in my kitchen, and my wall's yellow. 
So it's not a great picture, but you get the idea. At least it's a unique decor. And I hope somebody will leave a comment telling me that they know what that piece of wood was, what it was used for. I'm so curious to know. Oh yeah, and the paint color is now, for the display, is now Fusion Mineral Paint in Blue Pine. And if you don't want to make a display, you can put them in an old crock. I think they look good in a crock. Really, what doesn't look good in a crock? Thanks so much for watching. And if you made it this far, would you leave a comment below and let me know? And we'll see you next time.